All righty. I still don't have the second camera thing going on. What I was going to use, I'm not real sure about. So I'm still working on that. So we're going to have to go with the single camera, talk to my hands um, kind of thing for the time being. So anyway, hopefully the sound is good. Um, I don't have a super specific um, agenda for tonight. I, just because I missed last Friday with some stuff that came up, I wanted to make sure and have the class tonight. Now, next weekend on Saturday, it's National Scrapbook Day. And I am planning a project. <laughs> um, I'm running out of time rapidly, though. So part of the reason why I was originally going to do this on Sunday rather than today was to try to get the sample um, far enough along for you to see it. Um because I, I had a brilliant idea of changing what I was originally going to do. What I was originally going to do is going to be a project based on a slide projector carousel. Excuse me, that I'm going to change and turn it into a project that will span the summer as a summer camp. Um, Paper crafter summer camp project um, that will span across the summer. And I'll have more information to, on that as I put that information together. Um, I'll also have some what I'm calling day camp uh, projects, which are our four week long classes versus the whole summer long. So there's summer camp and there'll be day camp. And again, I'll have more details on all that stuff as that comes up. I don't have those samples ready to go. Those aren't starting till end of May, early June. So <clears throat> I'll have them done well in advance. And those will be... Um, done with pre-recorded videos that will be available um, when you purchase and you can then view them. So it won't be a case of um, um, you're waiting for them. The entire thing, other than the summer long, that will be videos released each week over the course of the summer. But the day camp, when you purchase it, all the videos will be available. And then with each of the day camps, there will be a one live session for question and answer and that sort of thing. And then during the summer camp, um, there will also be live sessions um, as well. So um, rather than them being all live, they're, they're recorded with some single live sessions in them. So um, you'd, you're not having to wait around for me to get it done. I'm trying to stay in front of rather than behind things going forward. So, um, so it'll, it'll be fun over the course of the summer. And then I'll probably still do the vast majority of Friday nights. I'll still be doing, um, the live shows unless another date and time works better for the majority of people. So, um, but the Friday nights is the best, best time um, for me, the alternate when I have to move in is on to Sunday afternoons and I moved it and then found out I had something going on Sunday afternoon. So I had to immediately flip back. So I'm sorry for the confusion for those of you who may have missed this live because of my earlier post over on Facebook. So I, I, I hate doing that when I go ahead and move it and then have to move it back. It causes for a lot of, um, um, of confusion. <laughs> so anyway, um, that, but that's, what's coming up on, um, national scrapbook day. What I want to do is we are going to revisit. I have a really fun idea that just popped into my head a couple days ago, unfortunately, because I was really struggling with what I wanted to do, um, for national scrapbook day. Cause I think people, I kind of get the impression people want to do, wanted to do a 3d project, because they're kind of, um, we've been doing a lot of album slash journal type things. And while that's where my interest is right now, um, I think people were more interested in doing a 3D project. So I was really kind of like, oh, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? So what I've decided is something we talked about several, actually it was a couple of months ago now, about revisiting the um, vintage um, the vintage suitcase project. This one is 
this is um, from the sample that I did in class. The actual original for this one I had done for um, Tim Holt's booth back in, I think it was 2011, January 2011, if I'm remembering correctly. It was I don't think it was 2012. I think it was 2011. So I had done that back in January 10 years ago. And he's like, wow, it really was 10 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it had to have been 2011 because I started live streaming classes in 2010. So, yeah, that would put it at 2000. So it'll be, you know, it, this one's 10 years old. Um, but we talked about revisiting it. So I'm, I'm going to tweak the size a little bit and I'm going to tweak the inside and there'll be a new book to go inside. Um, but yeah, the original I did for Tim and I, I gave him the original. So, um, but <coughs> I'm going to do things a little bit differently on the inside. This is still sitting in here the way I left it probably. Oh, there's a receipt that'll tell us some information the way I left it 10 years ago. Uh, let's see. This is for... No, that's in 2017, so I must have had this out at one point. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna do just something different with the book. But it, um, yeah, see, you know, didn't finish stuff up. But remember, remember my paper clip binding. I don't know how many of you have been around that remember that. So this is all we saw sorts of little. Yeah, and who says we haven't done we haven't done junk journals. <laughs> this is totally kind of like a junk journal in here. Um, little pages and envelopes and cards. And <laughs> so anyway, and then we had, um, you know, remember how I've said about a lot of the Tim Holt stuff? It's very similar to old Seven Gypsy stuff. Well, he's got these little, these little monocle type things. Um, currently in his line, and, and this is an old Seven Gypsies one from way back, way back. Um, you know, the little bottles, the pen nibs and stuff. Um, so I'm going to do different in here. It's going to be a lot more more um, grungy-ish. Um, I have to look at my time this week to see if I can pull off um, putting together a um, paper collection. I'm going to try. I'm not guaranteeing it. Um, or I'm going to look at the ones that I already have available um, that we can use. But uh, it is going to be modified. It's not going to be this one exactly. Um, and there will be a new tutorial for it. Oh, and people are talking about getting their second, their second, uh, shots. Well, I get my second one on Monday. So we'll see how that goes. So so anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So the book, though, I'm trying to, to drag everybody kicking and screaming into doing smaller books because we've gotten to where it's standard size for them to be over eight by 10. So I want people to do a little bit smaller, but um, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little, the, the suitcase itself a little bit larger. Um, some of the things I used on there are like the grunge paper and stuff that's no longer available. So I will um, come up with some readily available type of materials. Um, I'm not in a position to be ready to start doing kits again um, just yet. Um, not sure when or if I'm going to be doing kits again in the future. Um, we shall see. But um, I will make sure that everything we use is readily available. See, here's a little, a little journal in here. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's, you know, cute little stuff. My quill pen. So, fun times. 
it's always fun to kind of look back at some of the older projects. But since this one is 10 years old, I think, and so many of my more popular things I have revised and updated. So I think I will go ahead and revise and update this. Yeah, there's tons of these. If you go, you see lots of people who have made this. And I'm, there's some really good versions of it that used my pattern that are um, available out there. So the original one that I did for Tim used um, his um, configuration boxes. Um, though the size that we used, I used on that is no longer available. Um, so the hence the reason the pattern we constructed it um, ourselves. So, but um, yeah, I'll come up with something fun um, that we can do to tweak it a little bit. So um, it's it's reminiscent of this one, but not an exact duplication. So anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing on National Scrapbook Day. I should have a sample um, to show you of the suitcase, not the not the um, the book that goes inside, but this a suitcase by probably Monday, Tuesday ish. Depends on how Monday morning goes when I get my second shot. Like everybody's like, you just never know. So <clears throat> excuse me. But that's something we've got coming up on the agenda. And that will be on Saturday. I'm still determining whether I want to do it in the morning or the afternoon or the evening on Saturday for National Scrapbook Day. I kind of want to look around and see um, what times other people are doing because I don't want to conflict with too many people who are who do similar to what I do because then you're kind of stuck bouncing around or waiting for somebody's to be recorded though it's harder and harder these days you know it's so funny I'm seeing so many things um on different social medias talking about how they've been doing either live classes or recorded classes for a year now and you know wow, it's amazing and stuff. And I'm like, well, I started doing live classes back in 2011. So I've been, or 2010. So I've been doing it for 11 years now. So yeah, there was like four of us doing live classes when I started. And now there's thousands. And this is so awesome because that really does give you massive amounts of opportunities for um, anything under the sun in terms of classes that you want to take. So I just want you all to know how much I appreciate each and every one of you who joins me here in my studio um, and has been um, such incredible um, members of this community, essentially that we've created together. Um, it has really meant so much to me. I know I, I've kind of fallen down a lot in the last few years um, with everything that's been going on. Um, and especially in this last year, while I've kind of been struggling with my own head. Um, but I do just want all of you to know how greatly much um, your um, your support and your loyalty and just your willingness to come share with me um, is appreciated. It is um, it is noticed, and um, I just really do thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for um, for just for just being there and being being part of all of this. It's been an amazing and incredible experience. It truly has. Well, I know, thank you, Christine. Christine says she appreciates that my shows are always fun, but um, I, I do know in the past couple years, they haven't been quite as much fun um, yeah. as they used to be just because I know I've had, had some of my own personal struggles. So anyway, all righty. Yeah, sometimes going back to some of the old school kind of stuff is is kind of fun. 
I think everything's become so comp complex in so many of the more recent things. And, and sometimes going back to stuff that's a little less complicated is it has been fun. I think that's when I why I've been so attracted to a lot of this just art journaling types things. What I've on my own personal basis, I've been absolutely having a blast um, doing because it's um, it's not as complicated. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how many of you follow me on Instagram. If you don't, I would love I would love to have a follow from all of you. Um, cause I have something that I've just recently started. It's my own personal challenge. It's to kind of get my day each day jump started as I have been doing, um, projects, um, art journal projects. And each day it's kind of a different, um, a different thing. I'm using different journals for each day, but it could be all done in one, one journal. Um, if you guys want to follow along with this challenge, I'm committing to doing this through to June 1st, through May. Um, and it's amazing what it can do to help your creativity. You don't have to share it. It's just with yourself. But the more you make or create art, whether you think it's art or not, it is. Um, it really, you, you start seeing your skills improve. You start, it's like anything. The more you use it, the better you get or feel about it. Um, again, you don't have to share it, but um, just real quick. So like Mondays. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, shush. <laughs> my phone, my uh, watch is talking to me. On uh, Mondays I do, I'm doing a collage and it's just collage. It's a, It's got some paint on it, but mainly just collage. And it's just stuff that I happen to have on my desk. With this one, I actually have um, some journaling in there and I put it in an envelope because I didn't want that to be um or the pocket here because I didn't want that to be the emphasis so this one's going to be all filled um with just um collaging bits and pieces that I may have around so that's on Mondays so then on Tuesdays I'm doing it's just it's painted and I did this one originally in a different book, a smaller book, and it bled through. So I switched over to one. The, I love these. These are the um, Diane Revelries. And I wish I had an 8 by 8 one, but I didn't have one, so I had to go with the larger one. So this one's just going to have all just painted images doing different colors, different kinds of paints and inks and stuff. Um and it's just, these are meant to be very just intuitive, just whatever strikes you. I don't plan them out in advance. And I force myself to do them in half an hour or less. So, <clears throat> so that's Tuesday. Wednesdays are watercolor. So I did a watercolor here. This one did two spreads. I tend to, I'm finding as I do more and more journaling is rather than using the whole thing, I tend to want to just use one side but letting it kind of bleed sometimes over, you know, cause these, these other two, it was mainly one side with emphasis on one side with the other side, either blank or lightly. And this one, I just started out with just doing some scribbles with a bamboo um, pen tip in India ink. And I hold it way out at, at the tip. So you're not as it's to kind of help loosen up on the control. Um, and then when I started doodling on it, I started doing these trees and these remind me of when I was still an architect and doing landscape site plans. <laughs> and this is how you would draw trees on a site plan. So um, that was rather humorous. And then I just have a, a poem that goes around it. So that's watercolors on Wednesdays. On Thursdays. And these are all up on my Instagram. Now on Instagram, I'll be posting after this week. I'll just be posting them on my story. and then. Like on either Sundays or Mondays, I'll post the entire previous weeks in, in a single Instagram post. I'm not going to be posting all of these each day. Um, and there may be some days where I want to do more than one page. So I'll let myself do that. So um, and then so this one was from yesterday, and this was all cut paper. 
And this is all, I just grabbed some six by six pads and some bright colors and um, for Earth Day. And I just freehand cut. I didn't plan it, anything like that. I just freehand cut and glued down the pieces. But I love how cut paper looks on the black. And this is, again, one of the, the Ranger Diane Revelry um, books that she, this is the size that I want for my watercolor, but we'll go with that size. Um, but I couldn't, I, I don't have one in the white paper, so I only have it in the black paper. But I love cut paper on the black background. It just really makes things just pop and be so crisp. So that that's on Thursdays. Um, Fridays, I do off the page. And let me go grab, grab that. That's what I just put up today. And just like with the, um, the art um, um, journaling, I'm doing off the page on Fridays. And so um, this one is just an assemblage of stuff that I had around. And in this centerpiece, I wanted it to be encaustic looking, which is melted wax without, I have the encaustic stuff, but I didn't feel like firing right up. So um, I used some of the, the Seth after, um, he's got um, the vintage beeswax embossing powder. It's a little thicker. Um, so I did probably 10 or 11, maybe 12 layers on about half of those layers. I put the butterfly in and then did four or five, six layers over the butterfly. It's got about two layers down. It's got some, um, gold alcohol ink on there too, but it does look like it's embedded and it looks more like wax than it does look like, um, just cause it kind of has that feel to it rather than having um, it be like, <coughs> um, oh, what's the stuff you pour in that's so popular? Resin, so rather than like resin. And then it's just a bunch of some rusty bits. It's got a piece of rice paper in the background. Um, so these are some rusty bits where I just took it and you just take the, and I did these a while back when I was doing some, um, the echo dyeing. Um, but with, to make these rusty, you just put them in with some vinegar and salt in a plastic bag. And so it did, it rusts everything. And then I had to have some, like some beach glass. This is some dried seaweed and a little piece of driftwood from a beach walk and some velvet in the background. And so just assembling everything all together. And these are some clear frames that it's just the glass, the glass is all glued in. So, um, I've been wanting to do some sort of assemblage on there. So this is a off the page is going to be on, on Friday. Oh, sorry. Am I supposed to be looking at the chat? Oh, cool. Monica, that's exciting. All right. So Christine, um, where do I get my pumps and quotes? The internet. Um, if I kind of have, some of them are ones that I'm already aware of. Some of them, sometimes I have a subject matter and then I go hunting for something. Um, uh, many times I have a Pinterest board where I've got a lot of quotes in there when it, something strikes me. So then I go look on my Pinterest board to see if I've got something that fits with what I want. So um, then Pam, yes, that last, the black one, this one was an eight by eight. So anyway, was there any other questions that I missed? All right. So then tomorrow, oh, um, tomorrow I will be doing um, where I use tools. So it's mainly going to be stencils and stamps. And then on Sundays, I will be combining fabric and paper. Um, and it'll be in a book format, but combining paper and fabric. So every day I have, I do a different type of art journaling. And as I said, I'm doing these in all in separate journals, but they could be done in all one. So, but if anybody wants to take on this challenge, even if you only do it like one day a week, um, I would love to have you join along. And I, what I'm calling it is day hikes on the paper trail. So we're just taking little day trips and short little half an hour 
out of your day kind of thing. It doesn't, it doesn't become such a big involved projects. So it's just working um, quickly. So any of you want to join in, um, as I said, it's something I'm doing on Instagram. And if you want to hashtag it with day hikes on the paper trail, you can go ahead and, and do that. Um, but it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I think it's really helped me, um, a lot, even though I've only been doing it less than a week yet, but just in the end, you know, just gets my day kind of started or gets me a kind of a creative jump start um, each time. And again, you don't have to share them if you want to just, you know, play along. Um, it's fun. Um, but I also know a lot of people aren't really comfortable sharing what they're doing yet. So and that's totally cool. But, you know, I've been doing quite a bit of journaling. I don't always share everything, but I've been doing a lot of journaling art journaling. Journaling doesn't require that you have words because um, you can express just as much with even a mark on a paper. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, a lot of written words to go along. It You don't have to be able to draw or paint. You can, um, you know, collage things that are already exist, you know. So it's it's just a matter of kind of turning off your brain and just letting it flow out is, is kind of how the, I best describe it. So anyway, all right. So I hate this where I have to keep, I like, feel like I have to move my hands because there's nothing else to look at. Um, Cause I'd much rather talk to you face to face, but I'm having difficulty figuring out the best way to do that and still be able to show a working service. So that's, but see, learn, you need to learn how to turn off your brain. That's why I do this. That's why I do the journaling because it does, it helps me to turn off my brain because the part of your brain that won't shut off, that won't let go, that won't stop is on the opposite side. And I can never remember which is which right or left or whatever. When you sit down to create without intention and without pre-planning and just kind of let it flow out, you're on the opposite side of your brain than the side that wants to just spin on all of the stuff that you need to get done. So it is a great way, whether it's first thing in the morning, which is when I do it because it helps me to creatively jumpstart my day because I have all these other commitments in terms of design work and stuff that I have to do. But I also many times will do something late at night before I go to bed because it helps shut down that part of my brain to calm that part of my brain that just doesn't want to stop spinning. So if you can just let yourself go, it doesn't have to be beautiful. It doesn't have to be something that you want to share with the world, but if you can just kind of help nudge yourself over to the other side of your brain, it does help calm things down. So hopefully that explains a little bit. Yeah, journaling means doing stuff in a journal. It does not necessarily mean that you're writing. Um, my primary journal that I've had, you've seen all, the, all of these have been posted pretty much. Um, these are just painted ones. I haven't worked on this one in, in probably a couple months, but um, just playing. You know, mainly I like playing with the color and the paint. We've done a couple of these on, we did this one in class one day. Um, but it's just kind of playing. I like playing with stencils and playing with my paint. It doesn't have to be pretty. This one likes to stick together. I don't know what's on there that likes to stick together, but...
this is the last one. This one I started like two months ago and I have been in here because I finished this one up, I think last week, but I had started it like two months ago. I had put all of the texture down from the stencil. And then when I got my new um, Neo color crayons is when I played on here. Um, but um, it's just, it, as you can see, some have words. There are some words, some don't have words. There's no words. I mean, I don't write, so I'm not like diary type journaler. Um, a lot of these were going on, I can tell by what I did write. A lot of these were going on during a lot of the protests last year is when a lot of these were happening. So, um, yeah, this is like, this one's January 10th. So it was after the mess. So, um, yeah, it's journaling does not have to be about writing things down. It's not a diary. So journaling can be done with pencil. It can be done with paint. It can be done with collage. It can be done with anything. So. I'm not, you know, I sometimes get in moods where I want to write a bunch of stuff. But then there are many times that I do much better expressing myself. I'm not a verbal expresser in terms of my, the real me inside. I'm much more of a, through my, my art and paint and that kind of thing is much more, um, or as you guys say, when I'm working on, you know, here live, um, when I get into the zone, that's where I'm over on that other side of my brain. When you get into that zone, that's exactly because that side of your brain is nonverbal. It's, um, it just fires differently than the other side of your brain, which is much more analytical. And, um, it's where your verbal stuff comes from. That sort of thing. So, um, what I had, there was a couple things <laughs> so we could do today. Um, I can do a journal page. Um, I also can do one of the other things I thought about doing um, was I have this one of the, my paperback um, books. This is one that I had coffee dyed. So it's all crumply, but I thought we could do some um, jelly prints onto the papers. So that's one possibility. And since so many people liked the, the cut paper, it seems to be one that really attracts people. Um, we could also do a cut paper page. So we can have three possibilities. I didn't have a super hardcore plan for tonight. Um, And you always tell me, oh, do whatever you want. So we have, we could do something just, I can do a page in my journal, my just everyday kind of regular art journal. Um, or any of the ones I just showed you, we can do some jelly prints onto a paperback book, book, <laughs> or we can do a cut paper. And Pam goes, hello, prompt. Okay, so one, two, or three. 
Y'all are talking to each other and they eat. Finding out where everybody lives. Okay, Pam says jelly print because I know she doesn't have a jelly jelly press, so she's she's thinking about it. Okay, so we got a jelly print. We have two cut papers. Okay, we got more cut paper. So I think I think we're doing cut papers. Okay, well, one of the things that's really nice in terms of the jelly press is they are much easier to get a hold of than they used to be. Um, all of the big box or most of the big box stores carry them. I don't want to say all because I'm trying to remember if I've seen them at Joann's or not. I think Joann's has them. I know Michael's has them and I know Hobby Lobby has them. And they come in all sorts of sizes. I've got just to go over that real quickly. Um, and I love, 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 love them. Um, so I've got this one, uh, the five by seven. I've got the eight by 10. There are five cabillion, literally five cabillion YouTube videos on jelly press stuff. And the amount of stuff that you can do with them is phenomenal. Um, so if it's at all interesting to you, by all means, jump on board. And I also have a 12 um, by 12. So let me just show you a project that I am working on real quick that it's using some jelly press um, pages. And that, but we will go ahead and do the cut paper. Um, these are just some signatures. I'm putting together a book. Um, all of the base papers, I've done some stuff on the edges. But these are all done um, from the jelly press. And then I cut them in half. And I, I was doing them all as kind of background neutrals. And there's some other papers in here as well. Um, it doesn't show up super great on camera. But I was making them be all just kind of background. And then I've got some echo dive envelopes in there as well. But um, so you can do just really, most of the time you see people go bananas with color. So, so many of them are with color. But you can also do some just really beautiful stuff that's that's very subtle um, with neutrals. But I'll be showing you this book as I get it further along. These are just the signatures, base signatures that I'm going to add to. Then, and this is all done on watercolor paper. But, you know, you can do really beautiful, subtle stuff. So, anyway. So, we'll do some with Jelly Press down the road. Um, Yeah, you, I I just, they, they're easiest just to store in here. Air gets in there. So, the, I've not had, heard of anybody having problems with them drying out. But if that's something you've run into, Monica, um, they don't seal completely, so I don't, I've never heard of them drying out, but it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But they're just really easy to store in here, especially if you have pets. <laughs> now, you can wash these quite literally. You can run them under the, the sink. I like to keep, it's kind of, and um, this is, you can, well, this shows a little bit better. Real quick, then we'll get to our cut paper. I'm kind of just bouncing all over the place tonight, so. I keep one, of, I, I leave it. It's, it comes up with two sides. I keep it on one of the plastics, but I let it keep all this gringy old icky stuff on there. I didn't used to. I used to make it pristine after every. That's got some on the back too. Um, I used to clean it up and make it pristine after every time I used it. Um, but then watching some videos and stuff of what people are doing, leaving this crusty stuff, and eventually this comes off. And sometimes it's it's some of the coolest stuff onto a print. But you can use. Any kind of paints. You can even use alcohol inks. Alcohol ink stuff comes out way, 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 way cool. Um, so then I just put the this um, acetate thing back on it. And I just keep it in this clamshell case it comes in. That way I don't get all the different kinds of pet hair that I have in my house all over it. So, um, but 
they're very cool. They're they're not super expensive. Obviously, the bigger you get, the more expensive. But start out small. They come in shapes too. I haven't. I don't. I don't really. I might get a circle one, but you know, they comes in hearts and stars and all that kind of stuff. Not my, not my personal cup of tea, but. Um, but I would say if you only were going to get one, an eight by 10 is just a really good functional size that you can use for a lot of things. Um, in terms of, um, brayers, I have a couple of kinds. Um, this kind, it's just an inexpensive one. I also don't clean my brayers off either. I let them just get all crusty. It's fine. Um, this one works great. I've got this one's a little more expensive, but the thing is, is it, if you push too hard, kind of these ends kind of want to pop out. <laughs> so um, you don't have to have expensive brayers. Um these work great. I have not, people are talking about Tim's. I don't know his very well. I haven't used them. I do want to get another. It's nice to have two or three. So, and you know, 90% of the time I'm just using inexpensive acrylics. Um, lately I've been getting, I'm, I'm just totally into right now, um, this golden um, fluid acrylics they're a lot more pricey blick has them 30 percent off all the time and then use coupons at um michael's and joann's but i love those um yeah so you just kind of get to where you find things that you like on the fluid acrylics i just have very specific colors that i use uh, for actual color colors these work great. I use those more for some of the metallics or the, the um, kind of neutrals and that kind of thing. Um, a couple of colors, but for the most part. Yeah, there's, there's YouTube videos on making your, making your own jelly plates. We did, um, oh God, it was, it's six or eight months ago we did that roll thing in a box on one of the shows and I was using um, my jelly plate and I also showed how you can use a plastic bag in a pinch to get similar effects when you're looking for something just really rustic looking so yes you can use um, um, a plastic bag in a pinch and that makes some kind of cool stuff. So, yes, distress, distress inks and oxides, um, alcohol inks, acrylic paints, you name it, I can guarantee you somebody has tried it. Um, you can also use stamps and stencils and all that kind of stuff. If there's enough interest in doing jelly plate stuff, we can do some jelly plate playing. Um, I do not in any way, shape, form, or otherwise pretend to be an expert in jelly plates. There are people with significantly more experience than I have. But, you know, we can also play and learn together. Um as you all know, who know me know that I'm willing to dive in and do kind of the, Hey, well, let's, does that work? I don't know. Let's try it kind of thing. So, um, as we all know, that's my, my kind of jam. So anyway, um, all right. Since I didn't have anything planned for in here in terms of a color palette, I'm going to have to go pull, um, some um some paper so can you guys entertain yourself for like three minutes while i go pull some papers i'm not gonna think too much i'm just gonna grab um some papers to do this you can do this i'm using 
um, on, on this one, these were some pattern papers off of six by six um, pads. Um, and so you can use pattern papers. Um, you can use printed papers. You know, I have, I don't know. I haven't looked lately as to how many digital paper collections I have. If I had them, I would have printed a bunch out if I had been thinking um, for doing this. Um, so you can do stuff with digital papers. You can do stuff with um, solid colored card stock. Um, I'm just my, I'm looking around while I'm talking, trying to think where I might have some stashed digital papers that we could use. Let me look in here. Just use some of these. These are my bits. These are bits and pieces left from my um, what I'm working on with the um, um, the book that I started my hundred day project doing. Having never done the hundred day project before, I realized I had narrowed down what I was doing into a single project which doesn't fit real well with the hundred day project when I do it next year, which I will, and I will complete it next year. Cause this year I'll finish the books, but I realized about a third of the way in that I'd gone too narrow with what I wanted to do. It's, it's a better of a thing that you're generating stuff rather than it's becoming something very specific. Um, but I will finish that project. But um, so this is what I have. These are all printed papers left that I'm still, and I will finish those. But this is what I've got since in here. So I can just use some of the stuff um, that's in here. And this is using my, um, this is, was using papers from the, um, um, uh, trade wind. So, yeah, let's just pull out of here and see what. That's my faves. These are two of my fave colors right there. That's a fave. So, you know, I've and there's a bunch of scraps and bits. So, make for fun. Some canvas in here. <laughs> so, some tea bags. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I think I'll just, I'll just do that. So, and we're not going to put a lot of thought with this one. I just wanted it to be, because I was doing, I was doing it for Earth Day. So I just really wanted it to be kind of, um, you know, woodsy. And we could do woodsy. Maybe we could do more mushrooms and fairy type thing. Let's do that. That's just... Because this one, you kind of have to have to have a... Well, we could do abstract, totally abstract. But I kind of want to do something where I have a little bit more of an idea of what I'm making. So we can just, since I'm just going to randomly start cutting. So we can just do some kind of a little, oh, sorry. I get moving, my hands get moving too much and my autofocus goes bat nuts. Um, yeah, Monica, the, that would be the easiest thing to do is just to email me because it's too hard in the chat um, when I miss so much. So All right, so we're just going to start cutting. Uh, there's kind of my 
mushroom. Kind of seeing what we see in there. This is kind of, you know, essentially like my paper applique without it being super planned. This, if those of you who remember when I did the parrot and the owl. So we can give it that little texture under his little mushroomy cap. Let's see. And we can mushroom color too. This is fun digging in here. It's kind of a fat, stubby little mushroom bottom. So have them right side up. And so I want him to have a little texture along one side. Oops. Let's go ahead and glue that on. I'm loving glue sticks these days. For this kind of stuff, it's quick. It's easy. But one thing after doing this yesterday and I didn't get a chance to get to it today is now I got a vacuum. I've got little paper crispies all over the floor. Oh, bless this way. Seems like I had some colors in here when I first grabbed it. That's orange. Let's do some orange dots.
So I'm just gonna add some dots. We can add, we'll add some more with some crayon on there. Because making these any smaller than this gets a little tricky. A few more. Okay, now, see this piece right here? We're not, we're gonna save this. This is gonna be something we're gonna do that's gonna be really cool for another mushroom. So we're gonna save this piece. So remember, it's a don't toss that. Some of them I'm gonna run up to the edge and kind of run over the edge. because not everything gets contained inside the lines. Okay, so I might have to see what else I've got of some other papers, because like I need some greens. This will work, this will work, this will work. So we're gonna make So this is kind of going to kind of be a fern like thing. end. So that kind of gives me a furnish like thing. It's like, okay, so down on this part, give it some feathering kind of things here too. This guy's kind of bugging my ears a little too wide. You know, it's only paper. If you don't like it, just cut another one. Or we'll tweak it. I'm happier now. Or maybe he goes on that side. Nothing is set in stone until it's glued down, and even then, if you're fast enough, you can get it <laughs> unglued. One couple more. OK, 
Okay, I don't like his. He wants to be taller. So we'll give him a new taller. A new taller look. I wish I could get taller and slimmer the same way. Okay, I like that better. Much better. Maybe he goes back over here. Yeah, fiddleheads, that's what they are. So I'm going to challenge all of you guys to just get some black cardstock. You don't have to even do it in a book. Just get some black cardstock and pull some scraps. And just sit and cut. You can do it with just um, shapes. It doesn't even have to be making a picture kind of like the way I am. So we're going to take this piece of where we got all those little dots cut out of and we're going to glue it on top of this yellowy goldy color. I'm going to do this. I'm going to set my non slick mat over here so I can glue on top of it. So. Oops. Okay, I lost a little piece, but it's on my glue stick, so I'll grab it. I'm just going to roughly cut this out so I'm not using this big old piece to do this one. By doing the digital papers too, so you can totally just print it more <laughs> if you need it. All right, so then I'll glue it down.
See how that made a cute little mushroom top with kind of those just those random dots on there now? How fun is that? And now I want to make another little tiny one next to it. So I'm going to just cut some more dots out. <laughs> Same sort of thing. Then I also have some more dots. And that just happened by serendipity. It's just... You know, the shape that that was just lent itself so perfectly to doing exactly that. same sort of thing so this is what this piece looks like is this all so let's glue it on there and I'm going to cut the same sort of shape. So tuck behind there. Now let's see what I might still have in here that I can do something with him. I'm trying to think of what other things mushrooms have. Do we have stripey things on there? Oh, this might be enough mushrooms. Ooh, I kind of, I kind of like the orange guys on this guy. Oh, I like the orange much better on the turquoise. These are all dark ones. Get down here. Okay, I gotta go find some green. I'm trying to think of a project that I have printed some green. 
don't really have any green in here other than that turquoisey aqua color. So let me think of where I might have some other green. What about this part? Of it? Ooh, this has green. Perfect. There's some. Oh, it's kind of same color. Let me see what else. Is there, I think there's an olive in this group. There's some olivey colored. I like that better. Even better. <sighs> so we're gonna cut some leaf shapes. I'm just cutting some veining in. So you can see, I'm not thinking too much. I'm just kind of cutting. And if it doesn't work, you know what? I just grab another piece. Here I'm just taking some of the shapes that lend themselves. I'm going to take this guy off here. We'll use him, but he's catching up on everybody. Make some cool grass-like things that are kind of going in the background. Just kind of using the shapes that I've already created. Just to kind of fill in a little bit. Maybe another kind of this kind of shape leaf. Maybe not quite so big. Let's move it a little bit on that side. It's 
See what I'm doing is I'm cutting a V. And then from that point, I cut another V. Over the black, there you go. So I just keep cutting them V's. The orange measles stand out on the turquoise mushroom. This is true, Joy. Okay, so we're going to have him bleed over ever so slightly on. I'm just going to have just that leaf sliding over onto that one. Okay, I use this bright, but I'm going to stick down here in this green section to get some more. Kind of grass like. So, just getting the main pieces figured out, and then I can go in and add details more to them. I was going to tuck in behind there. It's going to go there. Everything's leaning that way. I want some things to lean that way. So we'll just force it to go that way. <laughs> there we go. Another orange dot we can add to him. This guy's still bugging me shape-wise. I 
And now he's better back at that. And maybe, so I'll have this leaf and just the one mushroom over here. I like that. Why am I having everything going? The, <laughs> he's not going the right way. It's leaning the wrong way. There, so that kind of ties that all a little bit. And then we can still add some more foofal in there. I think I want one more leaf back behind in there. This one's going to go back under and behind. There. And then I can add some more foofy stuff. But in general, I'm liking how that's all working. So once I kind of have the basically laid out like I do there, now I take my phone and... I take a picture so that I remember how I laid it out. So I'd have a, oops. So now I have a, oh, you can see my ring light in there, oops. Anyway, there we go. So now I have a picture of the layout of it so that when I start picking pieces up, I remember where they go. I can also take my pencil and kind of mark things like, because you can erase this as to where things like these leaves go. But I'm gonna start pulling up these foreground pieces. so that I can get the background pieces kind of hooked down. So I've got the brighter stuff is the stuff that comes forward and the um, other stuff is in the back. Right, so where's the... This is where it's convenient to have some little nonstick bits so that I can set that there. Now, I do not ink any edges on these. I know for those of you who know me, like, what? So I have some little marks on there. If it extends, ends up extending out, I can nip those off. Thank you. 
Now, see, now I can refer to my picture as to where these guys went. This guy goes kind of here, like so. I'll have to figure out where I can put this guy later. All right, let's get my little mushroom bottom. Down. And he's kind of like right around in here. And all his dots can just stay down there for the minute. Yeah, I won't forget the whiskers, don't worry. I leave enough that I can snuffle those down underneath. Those are some little details that we'll add in here. Okay, let's get this guy. See, and I'm leaving it unglued kind of there down, down towards the edge so I can snickle some stuff underneath there. So this guy, the little beard stuff can go up underneath there. And we can do more. those all up. I just did really skinny little snips. So I lost some of them off there. That's totally cool. Lost a lot of them off there. Snip a couple of them off. How come they all came off? Well, it's because that's antique paper. <laughs> when you use vintage paper, it kind of crumbles a little bit more than the regular paper. Okay, well, we'll do that with the regular paper then. This is actually literally vintage paper, so let's do some of this stuff. Do more of the tea dye one. Newer paper made to look old <laughs> doesn't dye as much. See, I go into my zone and you guys all stop talking. <laughs> I think it's so funny. I've hypnotized you. Where does the fern guy go? So he kind of goes in here.
And you kind of want some little bits and pieces to overlap. You don't want everything all kind of very separated and different parts. Kind of interconnect them by letting them touch each other a little bit. Now, I'm going to look this guy up again. So I'm going to use him. Kind of take, take up some of that the area there. That worked. Okay, so then I'm going to put this guy is going to kind of go in the background between the two orangey yellow ones. Up to the fold, but not crossing over the fold. I just doesn't want to stick down underneath there, does he?
All right, so now we need some more mushroom beards. I'm sure there's a name for that stuff that comes out. All right. Yeah, just, you know what? If you post it like over on Paper Doodles or on Instagram, um, you know what? Doing that, you know, the day, put it under the day hikes um, on Instagram. If you got an Instagram or on Paper Doodles on Facebook. People are so supportive. We are all, ter it's terrifying. It's terrifying to put yourself out there. You have no idea how terrified in over the years there are times where I'm just like, you know, I practically hyperventilate. Um, so, but people are beyond supportive. Um, so I just totally encourage you just to go for it. I can guarantee you no one will tell you, oh my God, that sucks. Because if they do, trust me, if they're on something I have control over it, they will be gone. <laughs> so, um, but people don't, as a general rule. This one's plenty wide enough that I can make it two. See, I'm looking at this and it's like, Considering I had zero plan in mind at all, I'm pretty proud of myself on this one. It's sometimes things just, they happen because that's what they want to be something. They want to become. And so don't fight it. I, we all fight it too much. Even, oh, good Lord, ask Pam. The number of ideas that I've had and then scrapped because I talked myself out of it. Because I'm thinking too much lately. I mean, you can ask Pam. Oh my God, she's heard heard all of my struggles in the last year or two years. Oh my goodness. Um, you can share. <laughs> you can share, Pam, how bad I've had it. So, but that's when I'm thinking too much. If I stop thinking, that's when I do so much better. Because we get so stuck in our own heads. And Pam's going, yep, I've heard it. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I've heard it. I didn't know this one was, this book was going to start going botanical, but it, I guess it is. But you know what? Yeah, let it flow. The next one could be totally abstract or very urban. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking doing this cut paper and I didn't expect it. After doing it yesterday. I mean, I may do still another one or two tonight just because. I'm loving it. But you can go through, you know, this is just using some of my digital paper, but just go through, because y'all know you have a stash. You can't tell me you don't. Um, just go through your stash. 
and pull stuff out. But the big thing is don't think about it too much. Just go. Make like the like I did on the first one, make flowers. You know, make you know how we used to cut out tulips in like elementary school? Pretend like you're in elementary school again. The goal of art is not to make it look real. <laughs> the goal of art is just to make it. <laughs> so that's that's my challenge for you is don't worry about what it looks like. Just do it. Worry less about what it looks like and more about just doing it and having fun with it. I mean, if you have to, pretend you're in kindergarten again, but with sharper scissors. See, I'm even going through my little scraps to see if there's something that kind of fits shape-wise. Perfect. See, if I can do this live <laughs> in front of all of you, you certainly can do it in front of your cat. Okay? Well, you never know, Pam. They could someday come back. Just because I've pushed them to the side doesn't mean they're gone forever. All right, so there's the big chunk pieces on there. This guy's just not hooked in very good. All right, so I know there were some loosey goosey pieces on there. Check those off. Then get all this sniblets out. Okay, at this point, these are small enough sniblets that these guys can get thrown away. Well, they end up a lot of them on my floor. All right, so now I can take. You see, I like it all lean. I don't know. This is just my the aesthetic I'm into right now is not having much over here. Because then this gives me room if I decide I want to put like some sort of something there. But I can also totally leave it blank. And what I might end up doing is maybe I'll make like a um, dragonfly or something that can go there. We'll see. Now, I, I get a white pen and a black pen. Now, what my favorite is the the, the Uniball Signo white, because it kind of writes on anything. And I'm currently into these Sharpie gel pens. They're a click gel pen, but they seem to write on pretty much anything. And I love them. So, okay. So we're going to start out with this because we're going to make some, some dots on our kind of classic mushrooms. Let's see. I'm trying to think, do they have more down and then go up? Or are they at the top and go down? I think they're at the top. So I'm just going to make some little circles. Not being... Keep them relatively random. And fill in some dots. When you think you need one more, stop and don't do that last one. This is 
I'm circling some of the bigger ones in black. That just gives some little bit of thoughts and definition. By taking and putting some ink on there, some marks, is these are your marks. This is you coming out and just making the term making your mark comes from that kind of thing. All right. So then I think I'm going to just go inside these guys. I love how these mushrooms came out. I really am. Or the measles, as Joy called them. Joy's gotten her fair share of listening to my blubbering at times too. Maybe do a couple of lines just to counter the stripes a little bit. If you fall off the edge, it's okay. So that's how I got on the those guys. We'll do some hatching on this guy. Fade out a little, do some hatching a bit so it's not quite so stark at the bottom. A little trickier to do in amongst the grass. Okay, so there's a little hatching on the bottom of those guys. And I'm gonna do, go back to my white pen circle around these little orange guys. Okay, then I'm going to take my black pen make some dots going around them maybe a few dots up in here I'm trying to hurry these too much and I'm not going to like it. So I'm going to slow down and go back. There's something very calming and soothing to me about doing things like making dots and adding these little details.
All right, then I'm going to make fluorescent green jelly. We're going to just make some little magic, some little magic sparkles. This is the kind of fairy dust. I need something right there. Okay, this piece is sitting there. Let's do work. What time are we at? Ah, Six thirty. That's two hours. We're about right. Yeah, that's what it needed. It needed that little bit right there. There was like this little kind of too dark of a hole. Little Rhonda Lee, good going. You go, girl. Because that's with my fluorescent. I'm going to be very sparing. A couple of fluorescent pink. I think those are just going to be dots. Not a lot because I don't want to overpower. But this is like the sprinkles of fairy dust. And then I'm going to probably go try to find some sort of fairy dust kind of poem or quote. But anyway, so there's our mushrooms. That was fun. I had a good time. I'm glad we ended up doing the cut paper. Okay, now I'm going to want any, I'm going to challenge y'all to do one. You don't have to show it if you don't want to. Or if you just want to show it to me. I won't share it unless you ask me to. But, um, yeah. Just pretend like you're five again. Yeah, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put um, um, a dragonfly. Oh, I put it in gold. Got gold. God, I got some silvery gray ones too. I don't think gold is too much for this. These gray towers. They're not metallic. I have a dragonfly right here that I can use as my. I need his body. Let's go for it. This is this is where it's kind of frightening because this is you know kind of like I could screw it up right here. That one's too dark. And now I'm chicken. It's okay to do this with pencil to start with.
That'll work. Okay. Okay, so now we'll erase out all the pencil that I don't want. His head's a little fat, but that's okay. We'll kind of just ignore that his head is so fat. So then we're just going to make him some little cells. But see, I didn't stop and think about it. And that makes it a whole lot easier. Because if I'd have thought about it, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have put him on there. Joy, you go in with confidence. I mean, I don't like how his... There, now his head doesn't look like it's sticking up quite so much. So you just, you know, adjust. <laughs> I mean, he's a little more detailed than the rest of it, but that's okay. Well... I could always just write my poem kind of over the top of it, but in white, because this is in like kind of a soft gray, so the white would stand out on top of it. Or I could do, if I didn't like it, I could take, there's all sorts of ways to cover up. So I could do a poem on a piece that attaches down over the top. <laughs> so there's, there's ways, trust me, of fixing things where it's like, oh, at the last minute, let's do this. Oh, well, that was a massive mistake. I shouldn't have done that, you know, kind of thing. So trust me, there's, after you stop, you know, hyperventilating, like, oh my God, I've just spent all this on here and now I've screwed it up. So after you get past that, you just turn your brain back on and let the other side of the brain come in and figure out how to fix it. <laughs> So where's my fluorescent green again? So I'm just 
got a little bit of that. So there we've got our little moonlit dragonfly. I don't know if he would fly around it this time of night or not, but he is. There he goes. Had to have some little fairy dust on him. So he's got some little bit of color, but there we go. We're in the in the fairy forest with the shrooms. <laughs> you didn't just use the stamp. Yeah, I thought of that. <laughs> You can put white jet, black jets, or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I know I don't. I'm not necessarily teaching as much when I'm, I'm in my other part of my brain zone, in the zone kind of thing. But um, I had fun. So, and it's got that little bit of 3D. So even when. You know, then it closes up. So, yeah. So this is kind of much more muted than the the bright that this was. So, anyway, my hangry daughter. She does. She, ever since she's a baby, she gets hungry. She's not fun to be around. So I need to go. I need to go feed her. So. Anyway, guys, this was a blast, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. I will post a picture of this. I'll post it over on Paper Doodles. I will also post it on um, on my Instagram. So my Instagram, if you don't already follow me, I would love to have a follow. Um, it's Laura D. Dennison. And so at Laura D. Dennison on um, Instagram. So. Alrighty, so... Um, by early in the week, I will post um, the um, the new, uh, revised, improved, or at least diff slightly different version of the suitcase. Unless I come up with some wild hair and we do something completely different. The way I think my brain works these days, that wouldn't shock me. So um, that could happen if um, the suitcase doesn't go the direction I want it to go. Um, so who knows, we may be doing more of this because <laughs> this is where my brain wants to be right now. Um, but anyway, I will post whatever we are going to do because now that I've done this, the other idea I was doing was a hanging fairy house. And now I'm thinking I want to do the hanging fairy house. And Pam is like going, Oh my goodness. She's doing it again. Cause this is what I do is I get all excited. I'm all hyped yesterday. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fly. Yes. I want to do this. I want it. I want it. I want it. And now today I'm going, Hmm, maybe I want to, <laughs> so who knows? So suitcase or hanging fairy house. <laughs> so um, anyway, so um, next Saturday, the 1st of May, can you believe it's on May, um, is, is National Scrapbook Day and we will do a project. And um, that project is under question at this very second so um but we will do a project and it will be um i will show it on monday or tuesday but that we will, and i will determine a time over the weekend as to what time's going to work best on saturday both joy says we will do both eventually it's just whether or not the fairy house decides it wants to be done or the suitcase wants to be done one or the other will happen for National Scrapbook Day and the other will come afterwards. So it's just whoever decides to jump forwards faster in my head. So anyway, uh, this is how my brain works these days. Just ask Pam. So she sm had to smack me from 3,000 miles away a few times. So <laughs> kind of that snap out of it kind of smack. So anyway, all right, you guys have an amazing, amazing weekend. And I will see you next Saturday.
at a time to be determined. Joyce says, I like the suitcase and the hanging fairy houses projects. Well, we will do them both. It's just, I'm not sure which one will come first. So, <laughs> yeah, Joy wants the fairies. Okay, Joy's put in her bid for the fairy house. So, after doing these mushrooms, I'm kind of inclined towards the fairy house myself. So, as always, my choice, as Pam says. But yeah, because, you know, I can ask your guys' opinion, but when it comes right down to it, I do what I want to do anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> all righty guys thank you so much thank you to joy as always um i wouldn't be able to do this without you i always appreciate your assistance as moderator and pam as stepping in to help out with um lois lois is going through some tough times right now so i guess she had her second shot and she's kind of resting from that and she's also um as you may all have seen she had recently lost her sister so we're gonna just cut her a little bit of slack for a bit and um there's a little blue in here for her so <laughs> anyway um but thank you joy thank you pam i always appreciate it and um thank you again to all of you you're always so wonderful and so supportive and it, it always make me feel better on those days when I just really don't want to show up, but I do. And you just make me feel so much better. And I so appreciate it. So everybody have an amazing weekend and we will see you next week. So peace out. Love you bunches. Bye for now. <laughs>